thechallenge.blogspot.com. I am back in the office. A lot of you have requested for me to not skip the process of finishing the desktop. You wanted to see me do the crumb holding around it and stain it. So, all right, I'm gonna do it. It's just one more video. Not a problem, I don't mind at all. I just don't wanna like saturate you guys with this project that's taking forever. So, where I'm at, here's the counter, if you remember. Um, it's still very, very sturdy. I did paint the cabinet that goes underneath. I think I'm gonna have to do another coat, right? But it is it's perfect. And we measured, we have the same amount of space here and there, except that obviously I got my file cabinet. Now, if you remember, right here, I had that one board that sag uh, for some reason. And I said I was gonna reinforce it and I did that the other day. This is um, the brackets that I installed before. So these are aluminum, the, uh, uh, the thin and they are a little bit pliable, but this one right here is steel. So I installed this and I started with the screws here and then I worked my way all the way back and it completely straightened the desk. I mean, it is just perfect right now. So let's talk about stain. Um, I did some swatches. I'm gonna show you what I got. This right here is the Minwax Red Sedona, which I thought was going to be perfect on mahogany. But it turns out that it's a little bit too orange and too gold for me. So there's uh, just two coats on this. So here it is on the dark part of the mahogany that I have. And this is on the light part of the mahogany. So you can see I have one coat here too and a little bit here for a third one. So I thought this was too orange, too light. This here is called red mahogany. And this one shows this way as one coat which is very pretty, I like it, but I think it's too uniform. Um, I don't see enough red in it. So, you know you can mix them. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with stain and it's still wet, so I'm getting stuff all over. What I'm gonna do is do the red, um, the Sodona Red, which is this one, as a first coat, just to really bring out some orange and red in the light part of the wood. I'm gonna wipe it off and then I'll add the red mahogany over it. So basically all those parts here that you see light are gonna be redder. That's basically um, the look that I want. Let me put those over here so you can see what it looks like. So here's a dark one and here's a light one. Put it against the wall, probably get a better idea. Okay, so yeah, that's basically what it's gonna look like. And then I have a clear brushing lacquer um, that I'm going to apply once the stain has penetrated and is pretty much dry. I'm gonna use some uh, sponge brushes, I guess. All right, so uh, right now I need to sand the molding. It's just regular strips of molding. They're pretty much the ones that I've used here. I have some, oh, I just made a stain. Ah, I made another one. Oi, 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 hold on. Yeah, okay, it goes away. Good, see, because I touched the stain and I have it on my finger, I gotta be careful. All right, it's the same one that I use here for the facing. It's three inches uh, wide and about three quarter inch uh, deep or, you know, whatever. So they're gonna go over here and over here. They're gonna stop right here and then go back from here to there. So I gotta sand them round and bevel the edges. It's not gonna take too long. Then I'm gonna bring them upstairs and I'm gonna meter them. I think that's what you call, you call it, meter. You know, when you do a 45 degree angle. I'm not gonna place them. I'm going to just measure and see if they fit. I'm gonna fit them, that's the name of it. And I'm gonna take them out and um, stain my desktop. And once that's done um, and it's drying, I'm going to stain the molding first. And then I'll bring it in once it's dry and I will place it against the wall because I really don't wanna have stain on the blue. It makes sense to me, all right? I'll see you in a bit. All right, so here's what I'm gonna use for molding. These are actually pieces of fairing strip. Um, they straight on one end and then I beveled the edge right here. If you can see that. The only issue I have with this instead of getting um, hardwood is that this is going to be a lighter color once I do the uh, staining on it. So I'm probably gonna have to do several coats on this to try to match what I'm gonna have on the top. I have my miter box ready. I'm putting it on the towel so that way I have a minimum amount of dust on the top. I'm just gonna cut my first piece and then my second piece and I'm doing a 45 degree angle 
to uh, uh, join them at the uh, corner over there. The issue here is that I'm not convinced that this is going to be a perfect 45 degree angle. We know that the wall is not straight, so I'm going to have to probably adjust it, send a little bit here and there, or cut at a different angle. We'll see whether or not that works. Um, I hope I don't have to cut too much because this is only two pieces that I have, and I really don't want to have to go back to the Home Depot and get more. So I have my first angle. I cut this, I'm supposed to get 27 and 3 quarter, but I cut it at 30. That way I have, you know, extra over here and I can cut that off. But basically when I place it against the wall, this is what it's going to look like. And so far it looks pretty good. So I don't know yet. It's going all the way to the angle and the corner right here. Um, let me cut my other piece, see if they fit together. If they do, then it would be a miracle. All I have to do then is cut the part that's right here and then bevel it with my sander. Okay, so I have my second one. I just need to cut it off over there because it's too long. But I'm just checking the corners to make sure I get them right. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, let me measure the length from here to right over there. And then I'm going to see if I can fit them against the wall and whether or not they're going to stay with the right angle in that corner. Okay, so here's my cut right there and I'd say this is not bad for first cut as I have to cut over there. Now this one here um, kind of like wiggles a little bit so what I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm perfectly square here and then the fitting nice and I'm gonna put like some heavy duty nails here and then I'm going to clamp it over there this way to bend it down so that I can nail it this way so that way I'm going to bend it a little bit because here if I push it down on that side I do have, it's not big but I do have a gap so I want to make sure that everything pretty much is flush to the desk. One of the reasons why you always want to leave extra on one side and on the other is because sometimes you mess up your angle and you end up having to redo it which is the case for this one so now i have a good angle right there okay so i just have to measure where i need to cut here and where i need to cut here and then i'm gonna bevel them and i'm ready to stain all right that's done um they've been cut precision cuts exactly where they need to be is my one angle so this is my side of the desk and then here's the other one that would be my husband's side of the desk and that's pretty okay as well so next step next step is basically me taking those downstairs i'm going to bevel them and i'm going to stain them and the reason why i'm staining them first is because i don't want to stain this and then have to put those up while this here is still tacky get the point so i want to put a good coat of stain on this let them outside and get to the point where they almost dry then i would fix them to the wall once they're on the wall i'll do my stain here and then i'll do my second coat on everything and making sure that i'm not touching any of the blue i'm back it's done i have those uh pre-stained right and they placed on the wall um you remember i have a little nick here i need to put some blue and then the other one is done, so let's just give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, before I stain, I forgot, I need to drill the holes for the plugs. Um, so, uh, technically I wanted to have them like right in front of where we would sit, because the uh, monitor is going to be right here, so most of the plugs are going to be there behind it. However, I don't want to drill into this board, because it's too thin right there, it's the one that I notched. So I'm going to drill here, so I'm marked right here, um, and I'm doing basically like an oval um, shape thing, so you can put like different plugs and cables. So I have one for my side, right here, and then for my husband, because he has several monitors, I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one right here, see the oval that I marked, and one over there. So I have my first hole, and it's uh, not finished, I have to kind of smooth it out, but I just want to show you real quick how I'm doing this. Because I don't have one of those big round things that people use to uh, drill the hole for the locks on the door. I don't even know what they, what they call it. But anyway, so I have my biggest bit right here. And I marked, if you remember, where I want my oval. 
and I'm doing three holes, one here, one here, one here, and same thing here. And then I'm taking my jigsaw right there, inserting it here, and I'm just going around just like that. Now when this is done, I'll take my Dremel with the, um, there's a bit, I'll show it to you in a second, there's a bit that's a sanding bit, and I'm just going to put it like this, go all around to really, really smooth things out and then hand sand the edges right here so that they kind of beveled and not, um, you know, you don't have like those little pieces of wood popping out. This is taking much longer than expected. Um, here's my second hole, and then over here is my third one. My issue here is that I checked my Dremel and I'm missing the bit, the little part where you insert the uh, sandpaper on it. I can't find it, I just spent about 45 minutes looking for it. So what I gotta do is go back downstairs and see if I can find a rasp, which is pretty much, it looks like a cheese grater really. It's a hand tool and I'm just gonna have to scrape all of that extra wood here and try to make um, as smooth of a job as possible. I mean, this is not like a pressing issue, only because there's gonna be computers and stuff and you really can't see it, but still, I wanna do a good job. Um, and this is pretty much dry. I like the way it looks so far. Um, yeah, I can't wait to just go ahead and do my first coat and that's going to be the Sedona Red, which I brought back. It's this one right here. So the first coat is going to be Sedona Red, and then, but really quick, and then I'm going to wipe it right away. And the second coat is the Red Mahogany, which turns out to be still all over my fingers, which turns out to be a little bit darker. See, that's the Red Mahogany on its own right there. So, um, yeah, what I'll do is that I'll just do a quick coat of the Red, wipe it off. I just want the lighter parts of the wood to pick up some of that red and then I'll go ahead and do the uh, um, the darker color. Alright, so I found this. This is a rasp bit. It's pretty, pretty, pretty. You see that? Seriously hard stuff. Let me show you. So this is a uh, um, one that I haven't done. There's another one I haven't done. And then when you lightly use the rasp, this is what it looks like. So you pretty much smooth it all. Then I gotta go with the sandpaper and kind of bevel these, but I just wanna show you what I'm doing here if I can figure out a way to put the camera in a way where you can see it. So here they are, much better looking. Now, once you've done everything with the rasp, you use this. This is a 60 grit um, sanding bit, I guess. And you just do the same thing. You go around like this until you smooth everything out. So they're not perfect. They're not exactly the same, but you know what? For what their purpose is, it's perfect for me. All right, so I say it's time to stain. First coat, like I said, I'm going to do the Sonoma Red, which is number 222 by Minwax. I'm just putting it on a rag, um, light coating, but what I want to do is start with the inside right here because these are hard to get. So I just want to show you that part. And it doesn't matter to me if it drips on the floor because the floor is going to be done last. You remember? That was the reason why. I wanted to remove the carpeting first and do the floor last because I knew I was going to have drips and marks and things and the floor needs to be, um, you know, cleaned out from all of the paint drips that I have from previous owners as well as my own. Okay, so that is done. Let me go on the other side and do the other one. And then I have to also lightly sand it before I can uh, put some tint on it as well. 
And then again, this one is redder, it's a little bit more orange. I just want to do a light coat. I'm going to go lightly right here on the top. Being careful not to touch the wall. I'm hoping you can see the red coming through. Okay, doing the same thing here. And again, I don't want a thick coat because I'm going to basically wipe this off in a few minutes. I really like that red. Unfortunately, by itself, I think it's just um, too orange. Right, I'm gonna make sure I got it all the way in here. And in the corner over there. Alright, now I'm ready to stain larger surfaces. So you just apply your stain in the direction of the wood. I want to saturate it. Can you see the difference already? And then you let it sit there for at least five minutes, no more than 15. So you can start wiping off the excess. All right, let me do the whole counter and then I'll show you what it looks like with just the first coat. So here's the counter with one coat just one coat of the Sonoma Red. And I like it. Obviously there's a contrast between the two. Remember this was pine and I did it in dark. Um, I'm debating whether I want to do a second coat of the Sonoma Red or if I just want to go ahead wipe off the excess and do the dark one and wipe that off. Um, I think that might actually work. It's not that I don't like the color. I think it's beautiful. But it's a little bit too reddish and I'm concerned that it's really going to contrast with the floor once I'm doing it because that's going to be in gun smoke, which is more of a uh, orange oaky color. So, hmm, waiting five minutes to wipe off the excess, I gotta make a decision. Okay, so I've removed the excess and there really wasn't much because the um, coat that I put on was very thin anyway and the wood really, really absorbed a lot of it. So, I'm gonna go ahead, I've decided. To try to match the colors. Um, I like this red but over time it's gonna get much lighter so I want to make sure I'm gonna get a little bit uh, more of a dark finish so I'm gonna go ahead and this is the red mahogany number 225 uh, by Mims Wax and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it on it and I'm doing the same process here. You go with the grain. Yeah, I really like the color. I hope it shows on camera. And this one I'm going to leave on a little bit longer before I uh, wipe off the excess. I'm hoping that you can see how the red highlights are coming through from underneath. To this part here. And once this is um, once I have the clear lacquer on it, it's going to look absolutely stunning, to be honest. Because what's going to happen is that all of those little light areas that look a little bit gold are just going to pop. It's almost going to give it like a, a 3D effect. But I'm not going to do that today because this has to dry for at least 8 hours. So I'll do the clear polish tomorrow. Alright, let me finish this coat and then I'll show you the counter one more time. It's done. All I have to do now is wait, pretty much, wait for it to dry. Um, I'm loving it. 
it looks like some seriously seriously expensive wood which it is well it's not super expensive it's mahogany but at least it looks like I have mahogany not just pine that's been disguised to look like mahogany so as it dries it's gonna get a little bit lighter and as I put the uh, lacquer on it there's gonna be you're gonna see more of the contrast between the light areas and the dark areas that's pretty much what's gonna happen so tomorrow morning when I come in and it's dried and I feel that it's a little bit too light what I may do is mix some of the Sonoma red with this uh, red mahogany and just put it, another coat on it but I don't think I'm gonna need it um, I'm really really liking the way it looks it's absolutely stunning I did a pretty good job I'm happy with that now I need to get a q-tip and do the areas right here I see little corners there um, because that's um, something that I cannot do with the rag and then I got to go over the uh, nails the uh, what you call them the finishing nails just with a q-tip kind of like tint them a little bit they're not gonna take in the color or anything but that's what it looks like all right um, anyway so I hope you liked it um, I know like I said a lot of you have asked for me to show this process you wanted to see me stain it so you have I'm not going to show you the uh, um, lacquer process because it's just basically me taking a sponge brush and going over and I'm just going to do one I'm just going to do one coat but I wanted to show you the process and I know that you've been impatient to see what the candle would look like once it's finished so it's almost at 90% right now which is good um, now the next time I'll see you this time around for sure it will be the floor which is probably going to be um, sometimes this weekend I'm hoping unless my husband's got some freelance but for now I'm just going to finish with the q-tip and just let it dry and wait for tomorrow morning when I wake up I'll look, give it a good look I'll see you know how much red I want or how much brown I want uh, to add on and then I'll put the lacquer and I will be uh, done with the project okay Alright, so thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to watch the entire series if this is the first time you watch me uh, redoing my home office makeover. This is, I think, number 16th um, in the process. So it's been a long, long journey, but I'm almost done. Almost done. So the link, the link is at the end or down below if you want to watch the whole series from the day I walked in and entirely got it this room out and uh, that took a whole week on its own anyway um i guess i'll talk to you later thanks for watching bye